Welcome to this video conference coverage program highlighting key data on multi-cancer early detection presented at the 2024 American Association for Cancer Research Annual Meeting in San Diego, California. The 2024 American Society of Clinical Oncology Annual Meeting in Chicago, Illinois and the 2024 National Comprehensive Cancer Network Annual Conference in Orlando, Florida. In this series of six chapters, our experts, internal medicine physician Richard Whittington and oncologist Gautam Agarwal will discuss the most recent data on MSED tests presented at these oncology conferences, including clinical trial data, real-world experience, and post hoc analyses from previous clinical trials, modeled benefits of MSED test usage, novel tests in development, and the impact of MSED screening on quality of life and health and screening disparities. Lastly, Dr. Agarwal is gonna talk about the other uses of multi-cancer early detection technology, technical studies, and novel multi-cancer early detection tests in development. Thanks a lot. You know, this field of multi-cancer early detection and the field of cell-free DNA in general is a very fascinating field to me. And I'm very excited about talking about these new applications of it. This first study by Nance et al. presented at AACR looks at identifying cancer subtypes with a cell-free tumor DNA-based targeted methylation assay. And just to put it into perspective, what it's trying to do is, is to subclassify, not just is there cancer, yes or no, but what type of cancer is it? And that may ultimately lead to making treatment decisions for these cancer types based upon just a blood-based test without even a biopsy. Now, this is obviously a very research-heavy protocol that eventually may come to fruition. But again, it's imp important to know this is research-based, but we may reach a point where you can make decisions with non-invasive tests for potential treatments. Let's move on to more technical presentations, including some novel MSED tests that are in development. We looked at, when you look at the whole process of getting a sample from the patient, processing it, and then getting a result out to a patient. We think it's a black box, honestly. As a clinician, you just assume everything's happening and it should happen the right way. In developing a test that's gonna be robust, that's gonna be broadly applicable, we need to make sure we reduce costs at every time point to make that test accessible and, and easy to use and cheap. And to make sure there's reproducibility, that it's quality and the test is not losing its potential for making a diagnosis based upon the time. So some of the abstracts that were presented at AACR looked at reduction in cell-free DNA at five-day processing time points. The time of blood collection and plasma freezing time may not significantly affect accuracy of MSET tests in healthy participants. Transportation and physiological conditions evaluated did not have a notable influence on test outcomes. I think that's important to know in somebody who's ordering that it's pretty reproducible. Another thing presented at AACR this year looked at the profiling of the immune response to cancer versus ctDNA detection identifies 84% of cancers with a less than 0.5% false positive rate. This is looking at a kind of a thing called metabolomics and other things that are similar to that. So it's still very early research, but very exciting. Some other tests in development that we'll talk about next are the MC TARG assay that uses mass spectrometry based platforms to assess blood metabolites. The Keras Assurer platform that uses AI enabled whole exome and transcriptome liquid biopsy to do not just early detection screening, but MRD testing, meaning as they're getting treatment, is it, are they responding or not based upon these blood tests? And then even deciding what the therapy they should get based upon that uh, blood-based uh, test. And that's an amazing platform that Keras is developing. Amber uses cell-free DNA targeted methylation sequencing to detect eight cancer types, and that's another test in development. There's other unnamed kind of tests that are so early that they don't even have names yet, where they're looking at different types of sequencing, whether it's looking at single nu nucleotide variants, viral-based DNA, indels and insertions um, and deletions, basically, 
And looking at multiple cancers still, the theme is most of these tests are focusing on multi-cancer detection rather than single cancers, because that's what most researchers now are looking at as kind of the wave of, of applicability to large populations. Okay, so as we draw to the end of our conference today, um, I hope you can see that the net is wide on multi-cancer early detection, and it's somewhat difficult to put all this into a total summarization, but I'll try. Um, I think as you look, we can see that from Pathfinder, our first double-blind studies, we're getting more and more information that backs up the idea that multi-cancer early detection is useful. We're getting new information on how often to use it. We're certainly getting more information about how to use it appropriately in our different groups uh, of patients that we have. And we're certainly getting some very keyed information on where we may be headed with multi-cancer early detection, testing, diagnosis, and ongoing treatments. Um, I'd like to close by saying thank you to the audience. Thank you to Dr. Agarwal. Thanks a lot, Dr. Whittington. And you know, I think that it's really important to know this is very exciting. This is something to be excited about in medicine because it will impact a lot of patients and how we treat patients in the future.